Victor Davis Hanson, senior fellow at the Hoover Institution and professor of classics emeritus at California State University, spoke with host Rebecca Manser and Red Pilled America co-founder Patrick Kerrilch on Monday's edition of Sirius XM's Breitbart News Tonight and described Democrats' push for reparations as a racial political strategy born from fear that President Trump is making inroads with black voters. Reparations poll about 25% support, said Hansen. It doesn't even poll a majority of support among African Americans, so it's not so much a serious issue as a campaign issue. It's sort of like the Green New Deal or the 90% income tax or the wealth tax. Dot Hansen continued, these are all talking points, but I think the people who are serious in the Democratic Party must know that if any candidate emerges from their convention with those albatrosses around their neck, they're going to lose. Everybody knows it's unworkable. The contradictions just jump out at you. Dot Hansen examined the arbitrary nature of defining parameters for who qualifies as African American. Dot How do you define African American? asked Hansen. Is somebody 25% African American? 70%? 10%? Do we prorate? Do we use the old Confederacy's one drop rule? Do you prorate reparations based on your DNA analysis? Hansen added, what do you do with people like Barack Obama, who have no relatives directly in America who were slaves? Or what do you do with someone like Kamala Harris, whose own father said that as a Caribbean, his family owned slaves? What do you do with other groups? asked Hansen. Do the Irish make claims? Do the Hispanics make claims? It would open up a tribal chaotic mess in the way that you see in the Balkans or Rwanda or Iraq. Al Sharpton's role in Democrats' promotion of reparations is a testament to his power within the Democrat Party, said Hansen. It's being promoted by Al Sharpton, of all people, who has a record of racism, inciting a riot, anti-Semitism, and fraud, stated Hansen. It's highly ironic. I never thought in my life I would live to see this faker who in the 80s and 90s was directly responsible for violence, homophobic statements, racist statements, anti-Semitic statements, and inciting somebody in a riot situation which killed somebody, become the power broker, maybe, of the Democratic Party. It's very sad and pathetic. If some white person, so-called, if we can even just adjudicate who's white and who's not, but if you could, if somebody who's a welder over here in Fowler or Riedley, California, that makes $40,000 a year, you're going to tax them to transfer money to Oprah Vance, asked Hansen. It has no sensitivity to class. Hansen went on. Class is really the more important adjudicator of privilege in this country and is part of this strange progressive phenomenon where people who have privilege, mostly white, but not always white, virtues signal by damning people who don't have white privilege as if they're uncouth or racist or xenophobic. Hansen added, so we have all these Malibu and TV stars always talking about white privilege, but as we saw with the college admissions scandal, they exercise white privilege, and yet, in the public domain, they're always accusing other people. 